All right, let's start our Sunday service with a soap. Okay. Uh, to start, uh, I, I just want to start with a question, with actually a few questions. Have you ever felt doubtful on what you do or what you decide in your life sometimes? Or have you experienced uh, self-doubt sometimes, all the time? Only me? <laughs> yes, okay. All right, so let's find out what the Word of God will reveal to us this morning. My reading will, came, will come from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 25 to 31. I pray that everybody will be encouraged and blessed before we offer our praise and worship to the Lord. Okay, let us read Matthew, chapter 14, verse 25 to 31. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter repli replied, Tell me to come to you on, on the water. Come, he said, and then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Well, fear and faith cannot exist at the same time. It is in our sinful nature to doubt and fear. As we doubt and fear, our faith weakens that lead us to sin. As we all know, sins, sin leads us away from God. Doubts and fear hinder us to have a full and intimate relationship with God. It holds us back in the things that God enables us to do. Let us always remember that fear and faith cannot coexist. I repeat that. Let us always remember that fear and faith cannot coexist. It is faith that God wants us to have in Him. Strong faith can move mountains. As Matthew chapter 17 verse 30 says, Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Yes, it is, there's nothing in, is impossible if we have faith in God or I, can, I should say that all things are possible with God. Yes. Amen? Amen? Amen. He will take away all our doubts and fears. He will give us courage and strength and He can give us peace and joy that we cannot find anywhere else here in this world. Well, the story of Jesus walking on the water and Peter walked toward him and eventually started to sink because he, was, he saw the wind and felt afraid. Yeah, it's a true manifestation that we humans are warriors. We are born warriors. We did not doubt. Yeah, I am. So that even we know God, we sometimes choose to doubt him in times of challenges. Peter was one of his disciples and Take note, already witnessed the miracles that he's done, you know, on, on his time. But still, but still, he doubt him and worries of what's going to happen to him because of the wind, of the strong wind. We are somewhat like, you know, Peter. We know how great is our God, and we know that what he can do in our lives. But when storms come, we are affected by it, and our faith weakens and started to doubt God and sometimes we question God. We worry on what will happen and we'll then find a solution in our own way in which makes the situation worse. In Peter's situation, in, Peter's, in, in that case, he sank because he lost faith. Yeah, I remember, well, I, this one, I can... Uh, 
but um, one of my experience. So I remember when I had my cesarean with my daughter. So I was worried about everything. I think everything. <laughs> so I'm worried of pain. I'm worried of going back to theaters because of bleeding and everything sort stuff like that. But it's that it doesn't happen. It didn't happen. I refuse to walk as I'm afraid that, you know, those tubes that connected to me will fall off and, you know, I will bleed and everything like that. So that held me back to recover quickly. And then I remembered to have this um, button device loaded with uh, epidural, you know, that's connected at the back, that you will just press that button and the epidural will flow to my spine and then voila pain free so no more pain and then so i can compare that situation i can compare that to uh, the holy spirit and my faith my faith in god that in times that i am worried and or we are worried or and our mind was overwhelmed with the struggles Let's just press that button of faith. So let's just press that button of faith and let the Holy Spirit flow in you, you know, and through praying and through uh, and putting your, our trust in Him fully, that the worries will go away and eventually it will be replaced with peace. Yeah. So God wants us to trust Him in whatever circumstances we are in, good or bad. He will make all things for the good of those who believe Him. It's Romans 8.28. So just remember, just trust God with all, your, with all your heart and be obedient to Him. He will make you experience life in full with so much joy and peace. So can I request everybody to stand up and let us pray? Almighty Father, oh, oh God, oh God, Father, God, oh Lord, oh Jesus, you are so good, oh Father. You are our peace and our comfort, oh Father, God, oh Lord. Forgive us, oh Lord, if we always fail to trust you fully, Lord. We thank you, Father, for letting us experience, oh Lord, the peace just by, just by trusting in you, oh Lord. Father, I pray that you will enable us to fully trust you. Make our hearts obedient to you and us to continue to grow in your words, O oh Father. Father God, I pray for this church to grow more in faith, more and more, O oh Father God. Cancel all our fears, worries, and self-doubts this morning so we may experience your amazing love, joy, and peace that only you can provide, O oh Father. Father, let your Holy Spirit be upon us as we praise and worship this morning. Cleanse our heart, O oh God, so we may feel the fullness of your presence in this place. We love you so much, O oh Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hi, come on, church. Why won't you just praise him? to lean on to Jesus today. Amen. Come on, who's ready to lean on to Jesus today, church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he's so good. Amen. Come on, we sing. I so say them for a lie. So darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Come on church, we sing this I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle, still the miracle that registered in heaven oh my praise belongs to you forever come on we sing this is my testimony from death to life this grace rewrote my story 
So good. 
lift our hands. You take our lives, flawed yet beautiful. Restore, refine, Lord, you're merciful. How good you are, God. You redeem. Redeem. Revive. Spirit of God. Breathe on your church. Pour out your presence. Speak through your word. We pray in every nation. Christ be known. Would you? 
We honor you, God. Oh, hallelujah. You are worthy of everything, oh God. You are worthy even our own lives, oh Father God. We offer it to you, Father. Oh, Holy Spirit, be praised. Be magnified. Lord, hallelujah. Lord, this is your time, oh God, Lord. We long for you, Holy Spirit, oh God. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, we pour out our spirit men right now, oh God, right here, oh God, and allowing your spirit, Father God, Lord, to come and fill your people, oh God. Fill your church, oh Father God. We long for your touch, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, we long for your touch, oh God. Oh, be free, Father God, Lord, to touch all of us, Father God. Oh, we need you, Lord. We need you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Spirit, Father God. Feel your people, Father God, Lord. Oh, Jesus. We would like, Father God, to be engaged with you, oh God, this morning, oh God. We would like to touch, Father God, Lord. Your heavenly throne, oh God, in this place, Father, and only through the power of your Holy Spirit, oh God, that we can see, God, we can hear, Father God, Lord, your voice, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Take your place, oh God. Take your place, Jesus, hallelujah, as we enthrone you this morning, oh God, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, you are mighty God, Lord. Lord, we find delight only in you, oh Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, you are a great God, you are a great Lord. Your power is absolute, oh God, nothing, Lord. Nothing compares to you, Father God, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, your understanding is beyond human comprehension, oh God, Lord. But through the power of your Holy Spirit, God, Bestow the us, oh God, Lord. Oh, we will know, God, who you are, oh God, Lord. And that's why we are here today, Father God, Lord. Lord, we would like to know you more than as a Savior to our lives, oh God. More than, Father God, Lord, as a healer, Father God, in our sick body, oh God. More than a provider in all of our needs, oh God, Lord. But we are here today, God, Lord, to worship you, Father God, in spirit and in truth, God, Lord, worshiping you, who you are, oh Lord, the God who said, I am the God who I am, oh God, Lord, you are the beginning and the end, oh Father God, you are the Alpha and Omega, oh Lord, you are our creator, oh God, Lord, and you have created us, Father God, according to your image and your likeness, oh God, and nothing can take that away from us, oh God. Oh, thank you, Jesus, oh God, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Why not, church? Offer him a sacrifice of praise. Come on. Offer him a sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, more of you, Jesus. Hallelujah. More of you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, that faith will arise among us, Father God, 
right here, Father God. Oh, thank you so much, oh God. You are worthy of praise. Glory and honor belongs to you alone, oh Jesus. We praise you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Church of God will just agree and say, Amen and Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wonderful worship. Before we get into our worship, why not pick one another? Maybe five people, you know. Those people you maybe have not met, okay. Just, uh, you know, just welcome them in this place. Welcome them. We are family. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We welcome everyone. Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, church. <laughs> it's good. I have three people. <laughs> no, no, praise God. We are full. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning. God is really awesome in this place. Amen. Amen. Uh, great worship. I don't know about you guys, but for me, there's no other place I would rather be than to be in the presence of God. Amen. So I'm always looking forward on gathering like this, not only on a Sundays, but every time I am with, uh, you know, with the body of Christ, it brings a different joy. Amen. We are being restored. How many of you are uh, feel strengthened, revived, restored? Amen. Amen. After the whole week of work and all of those things, but praise God, we have this opportunity that we can, you know, come together as brothers and sisters and meet God in this place. Amen. How many of you were blessed in our soap? Amen. Amen. I am blessed with Sister Shirley and I know that many more, you know, many more of us who are now engaging with the Word of God, engaging in the reading of His Word, I know we, your pastor, believe that, you know, we are a Bible church. That's what you're saying, right? We are a Bible church and how good it is, you know, if all of us, you know, have that time during the week to open their Bibles and engage with the Word of God. And you will see amazing things that it can do to your life. Amen. And the Holy Spirit, you see how uh, Sister Shirley came down in here and, you know, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. So we long to see every one of us doing that. Amen. So, yeah, as Monica said, it's already December coming. And uh, we don't want to lose this chance to pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries for December. Okay, so church, if there's uh, any, I will, I will mention names who's, having, who's celebrating their birthdays for this month and also their anniversary, uh, sorry, next month. We do it like, you know, advance anyway. Uh, next month, and if I fail to mention your name, it doesn't mean that we don't love you. Of course, we love everyone, amen. But uh, it happened maybe that you are not yet in our database, so uh, I would like to encourage you to come in front, those people whom I will call, and also those people whom maybe I fail to call, I want you to come here and, you know, don't uh, lose this chance that we can receive, you know, prayers, amen. Uh, for me, when I'm having my birthday, there's no other thing I would like to but to have people prophesy in my life. Amen. So we would like to call them quickly and I would like you to come here in front because we have a special, special person in the house. Amen. And we are looking forward to hear word of God from this man. Amen. Pastor Moise will introduce you later. Amen. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, number one, the list, I think, Minoy. Uh, Charlie. Charlie is here now. In the Sunday school, even the parents not yet here. Amen. So, wait, let me just see my list. Where is it, Samantha? Okay, uh, her, I got it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Charlie will pray for him. Anyone who wants to volunteer to represent uh, Charlie, please come over. Uh, who is the Ninong? I, I'm sure she, he has a Ninong here. Charlie. Anyway, please come. Uh, we have Brother Dexter's birthday on the 4th of December. Yeah. Can we ask you, Brother Dexter, to come over? 
And it's my birthday on the 8th, so I'll be with you. Uh, Sister Arsene, he's not, uh, she's not with us anymore. She's in the Philippines, but we always consider they our family. So Sister Vina's birthday, yeah. So ma, come here, December 13, okay. We have Brother Glenn, December 16. We have Sister Zenny Yamson. She's in the Philippines as well, but I would like to call... Uh, Lastly, she said lastly to represent her mother-in-law and Shirley's birthday on the 23rd. We have Jamie's birthday, but she's in the other room, so I'll ask the mother, <laughs> uh, the big Jamie, okay? Tama ba yung big Jamie? Anyway, uh, we have Hezed, who is not yet here on the way still, okay? So who's the Nino of Hezed? I think Brother David. Who's the Nino of Hesed? You're the Nino, right? Can you represent? Yeah, can you represent Hesed here? And of course, the mother and father, not here yet. Uh, not and Portia. We're expecting them to come. Amen. So it's their anniversary. So who else? Maybe I have not mentioned their names and celebrate. Oh, yay! Colette's birthday! When is it, Colette? Huh? The ninth. The ninth. Okay. Who else? Marcel, okay, we'll celebrate Marcel's uh, birthday soon, but you come over here so we can pray for him. <laughs> Let the wife represent Marcel, yeah. Sister Marge, when is his birthday? 17. Anyone else? Anniversary. No one else? No more? Uh, your son, your daughter, your children having birthday for December. Anyone? Okay, if there's no one... Jesus' birthday, yes. Yes, we'll... Uh, so, uh, maybe we can request uh, someone to pray for us and speak blessing. Uh, yes, Pastor Moise. What I would like you to do, church, this morning, exciting, amen, to just prophesy the word and pray for them. I'd like to get my the microphone because my wife is also... Pastor Connie is December 8th, birthday as well. I don't want her to miss these blessings. And I'd like you to stand. Come on, church. I'd like you to stand. And uh, guys, I'd like you to just move forward there and face me here. Can you just go? Yes, maybe uh, that, that, that row there. Come on. That row. Yeah, you, you guys. Come on. Yeah, the celebrants, I'd like you to, to stand here. Okay, stand here and face me. Face the front. Yeah? Face the front. And uh, yeah. I'd like you to spread over. Come on, spread over. Amen. Pastors, I'd like you to just go behind them. Pastors. I'd like you to go behind them. Uh, Pastor William, William, I'd like you to come. Pastor Edward, Pastor, uh, you know, Hilda. Amen. Godfrey and uh, Pastor Steve, I'd like you to just go there. Just spread out more. Collate, come on, spread out there. Amen. And I'd like somebody in the congregation, if you feel, amen, that would you, you like to pray for them. Something in your heart for these brothers and sisters. Maybe a family maybe a son, a daughter, a friend, I'd like you to come and just put your hands on them. We need to do this as a church. Amen? If you're a friend, if you're a father, if you're a mother, maybe you're related with them, your husband, your wife, I'd like you to just come and, 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 and stand with your wife, with your husband. And, and if you are the daughter, amen, I'd like you to just come with them and let's declare the blessings of God. Amen? Nothing, amen, can be compared when the people of God just comes together. Come on, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't, you know, uh, uh, you know I would say, uh, miss what God would do in their lives. Come on. Hallelujah. Put your hands on them. Put your hands on them. Can somebody put a hand? I don't want to miss anyone. Come on. Amen. I don't want to miss anyone. Amen. Somebody is still there. Amen. That needs a hand. Can you look? Amen. Somebody there maybe that... Uh, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, Jesus, we just give you glory. We just give you praise. Hallelujah. Come on, mention a prayer. Hallelujah. Come on, let the heaven, hallelujah, open. Hallelujah for this wonderful people of God. Hallelujah. Believing, hallelujah, that prayer, hallelujah, riches, hallelujah. Every need, every heart, hallelujah, the hands of God are not short, hallelujah, and this is our heart, Lord, hallelujah, 
as we pray for them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. These wonderful people of yours this morning, the church is rising up. Hallelujah. Because the Spirit of God is in us. Hallelujah. And we want to declare. Hallelujah. Come on, let's declare the Word of God upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah, Lord, let this act of faith, hallelujah, this morning, Father, reach you, God, as we pray for each and every one of them, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, because the greatest gift that, Lord, we can give to them, hallelujah, is pray, hallelujah, is prayer, we pray for life, hallelujah. We pray for life, Lord, hallelujah. God, whatever is dead, whatever, Lord, God is dead in their lives, we pray that will resurrect, hallelujah. Father, I pray life, we pray life, Lord, hallelujah, abundantly. Father, in the name of Jesus, breathe on them, breathe on them, hallelujah. And Lord, hallelujah, Father, this birthday, Hallelujah, Lord God, Father, will be the most blessed birthday. Even all their birthdays combined, Lord Father, in the past. Father, we look on the future for the lives, oh God. Father, we thank you and we just give you glory. We just give you praise, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, and the church will say, Amen. Happy birthday! Praise be the name. Amen. Let's see the news. Amen this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise. Hey church, we're so glad you're here. Welcome to Vision News. Listen up because there's a few exciting things coming up for us here at Vision Community. A huge thank you to everyone who served, for all our volunteers and those who joined us for Vision Together last Sunday. It was yet another empowering experience as our member and network churches across Perth came together as one, with Pastor Kara speaking an encouraging message on creativity. We can't wait to see where Vision Together will continue to take us, so stay posted for when the next one will be. Hey Vision Youth! Save the date for this Friday, December 4, because Youth Night is on. It will start at 6.30pm with the details of location to come. Feel free to approach Kriya Matthew or follow us on Instagram at Vision Youth Perth so you don't miss out any info. Christmas is getting closer and closer. Join us this year for our Christmas service as we celebrate the birth of our Saviour together as a church family. Be sure to invite your family and friends on December 20. You can't miss this. What a unique year it has been for all of us, but God has been faithful. And so, we want to close out 2020 and welcome the new year with a New Year's Eve Axe Night. Get expectant as we believe meeting the new year with a time of extended prayer, worship soaking and a shout of praise is going to be powerful. What better way to launch into 2021? So see you there on December 31. In line with moving our church's vision forward, we have youth, ladies and married for life groups that continue to run in smaller settings during the week. These groups are a great opportunity to deepen our faith and truly understand what it means to live out the gospel. We encourage you to get in touch with Pastor Moises or Pastor Connie to join one today if you haven't yet. We want to remind all parents that Vision Kids Sunday School starts at 10.30am, so make sure to drop them off at the kids room on time. Also, Church Online is still available as service replays that you can access on our Facebook page anytime during the week. You can find all this information on our social media accounts, including the latest sermons on our YouTube channel and SoundCloud. So give these accounts a follow if you haven't yet. That's it for this week's Vision News. Remember, we are a church that's transformed and empowered to influence the world. God bless! 
very happy to <laughs> do the tithes and offering. <laughs> um, I know everyone's excited today for the service, uh, but can we please first put our hands together to thank the worship team? Because they prepare us all into that praise and worship atmosphere. I always cry every time, you know, the beginning of this service because of um, how um, feel uh, full of spirit in the in the church. Yeah. yeah. Um, today I was assigned to, to to do the tithes and offerings exhortation. Um, I'm hoping to encourage you all in giving. My, my passage will be coming from the Second Corinthians chap, chapter 9, verse 7 to 8. It says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. On this passage, Paul was addressing the Corinthians to be, ge to be a generous giver. <clears throat> Sorry. Emphasizing the timely and cheerful giving, a joy of giving generously. Paul wants the church to understand the principles of total sharing, the willingness to give based on what our heart is telling us, and that is a blessing itself to be being granted the ability and privilege to give to God's work. For growing generosity is a sign of growing faith. Reading this reminds me of my past self. When I was still unaware of the essence of obedience or being obedient to His word. So when the tithes and offering comes, a part of me is reluctant to give. Or sometimes, I just gave whatever is extra after the expenses <clears throat> for that pay period. Saying to God, sorry God, we have an invitation today. Eh? I have to buy a gift. So I have to use the money. Or, <laughs> or there are some weeks that um, I'm going to say to him, I have to buy some stuff and I need this and I need to do that. So I'll make up on next week, God. So I'm thinking, oh, I know he, underst he will understand. He always do. <laughs> and that becomes a habit for me. So a very inconsistent and reluctant giver. Yes, that's me. <laughs> Until I started reading the Bible and, and learned that giving tithes is one of the ways you can show God your obedience to Him. So I started obeying, um, obeying through giving my tithes. But then I came across this verse at 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9, verse 6 that says, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. That's when I said to myself, wow, I want to be a generous giver. <laughs> Not because I am expecting to reap generously but because God have been blessed us in advance he blessed us abundantly with our time with our resources our talents um, and even our life itself it was all given to us as a gift from our father in heaven then I thought God do, do we really deserve this are we deserving of those gifts um, until I read Hebrews chapter 13, 16 about sharing your gifts to others. So, it says there, Do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. So, those gifts were given to us so God may use us. <clears throat> so, we can give to others cheerfully and unreluctantly, like how generous God is to us. So, let us not limit ourselves as to how much we or what we can give. As long as we give with a cheerful heart and not under compulsion. Let us all be reminded of the blessing, blessings God gives while we are giving. His motivation for giving was love. Which we want love to be our motivation too when we do our tithes and offerings. 
Can I please ask the ushers now to come to the front and let's pray, please. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. We praise you, O God, for you are a generous God in all ways. We glorify your mighty name, for your word is precise, and you are true to your promises. Thank you, for you are a God who is more than enough. We thank you for always looking after us, blessing us with our job that give us a living, a healthy body so we can do our job and for the time and capabilities to fulfill our jobs. Thank you, Lord. I pray, God, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit and touch our hearts so that it will become like yours, generous, loving, giving, and cheerful, so that we will always be thinking of giving rather than receiving. As you have said in Acts 20, verse 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. May we be reminded of the blessing you give us and gave to us through Jesus Christ. And that our motivation for giving to our tithes and offerings is love. Love for you, O Father, and for the church. Bless the tithes and offerings we give today that it will become a great blessing to many. May you, gave, may you guide us, inspire us, and empower us to be a generous and cheerful giver. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Come on, give a club offering to the Lord Church. Hallelujah. So good. So good. Amen. What I am blessed even today is see our themes. Amen. Even the, you know, sharing of the word, the exhortations. Amen. It's so great. Amen. Hallelujah. The ushers there. Amen. Come on. Are you, do you agree with me, church? Amen. Our people that is serving us every Sunday. Amen. Is a great blessing. Amen. And we would like to uh, strengthen that all the more. It's so good. Our worship team. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. So great. Hey, church, I just want you to uh, know, I know you have heard our Christmas. Uh, do you know that it's Christmas now coming up? Amen. And so December 20, I just would like to emphasize that. December 20, Sunday, I'd like you to clear that until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Is that okay? Because we're going to extend our worship uh, to have uh, a bit of uh, a celebration for Christmas. And so in the afternoon. So you will get more announcements of this. But I'd like you to put your time until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's have time of fellowship in food, in gifts, in, uh, you know... Uh, a celebration of uh, mainly uh, we are going to have our kids, you know, present to us. Amen. Do you love the kids? Amen. And some of our youth, amen, to, uh, you know, present to us during that Christmas time. Amen. So put that. And number two, I'd like you to put that in your calendar. Another one is New Year. Look at your neighbor say New Year. December 31, I want the church all to be here. December 31st. My heart as your pastor, I don't want you to miss the time of praying together while we wait for 12 o'clock, you know, so, you know, on January 1. So December 31, Thursday. Look at your neighbor, say it's Thursday, mate. Thursday. So wherever you are in the world, 
I want you on December 31st at 9 o'clock sharp in the evening in this place. We are going to fill this with worship, with praise, hallelujah, with soap, hallelujah, with the words of God. It will be a continuous prayer and worship until we cross the line. Amen. And if God will say, don't stop, we will continue. Amen. And no one is saying amen already. <laughs> amen. So please put that. Amen. It's just a great time to come together with the family. Amen. Uh, you know, preparing for the new year with lots of prayer. Amen. Lots of prayers. Hallelujah. We need prayers. Amen. We want God to move in our lives and the church. Amen. And the nations. So we are going to come and pray because great things are happening. You will hear from me our blueprint of our vision for the next three years. I would like to present to you Multiply 2023. We have made a blueprint of this church, where we are going, how are we going to do it for the next three years. Amen. Anyone excited? Amen. That we have a direction for the next three years. Amen. And I want to present that so that we can pray that to the Lord. Amen. Just would like you to know, great people, amen, and wonderful church for uh, sharing your seeds of vision for the next last, I would say, two, three weeks. So we are able to help our brothers and sisters in the Philippines who were flooded because of the typhoon. So we're sending, uh, you know, uh, our help to them. Our partner church in Canada, Pastor Sela was sent lots of help to our churches. Amen. Uh, if to tell you, you know, uh, in figures is about, I think, 100,000 pesos has been sent so that uh, the floods, uh, you know, affected not only our movement, but to all the churches that are, you know, flooded. Because even until now, Pastor Bong was telling me, Pastor, we have uh, lots of food coming to us. But that would last maybe another three, four weeks time. We need some more food in the next coming weeks because people are flooded even over their houses, you know, in that place. So the Lord is good. Amen. We have got time to participate in this church to help our people. Amen. And hey, something is coming up. We would like to help children. Amen. Because one of our vision is to raise up the younger generation. Amen. To influence the world. That's one part of our mission. And so uh, we would like to see in the future that this church is supporting children that are maybe in the streets, that are lost. Bring them, you know, give them education, give them training, disciple them and, you know, connect them to a church that can love them and care for them. Amen. And we would like to do that as a church. So that will be a progression that we're going to have in this church. Amen. Hey, we are influencing the world, church. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Amen. So I'd like to call that tall man. Amen. Who's having the heart for children of the world. Amen. And he would like to reproduce more children in the world. But uh, now you can see that uh, he is an example because in his family has reproduced a lot. So he has Peter, eight years old, a friend of uh, Ethan, amen, and uh, Charlotte, which is three years old, and another one coming up in January, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He is the head of Compassion Australia in WA. Amen. An international organization that helps children in the world. So thank you for coming, brother. Amen. And speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Moises. What an honor to be here. How good is your bass player? This guy here. He can play the bass. During that Christmas carol, I was like, this is some of the best bass playing I've seen in church. 
One thing I love about Pastor Moises is not just the presence of God flowing in this church, it's the presence of God flowing in his family. Pastor Connie gets up here, the Spirit of God's moving, moves through their door, and the whole family just moves so much in the presence of God. How can we as a family in the local church, but as our own families, move in the presence of God to see miracles, to see the Spirit of God released in our streets? I want to share, in the series that we're on right now, around you have the, the gift of prophecy, the, the rhema word. I want to continue that series about how your family can move in the glory of God. The glory of God belongs in your family. It's yours. Take it. Don't belittle what God wants to do with your children right now at this age. Don't belittle how God wants the presence of God and the glory of God around your dinner table around your prayer times. But before I open up the word, I want to share on this vision for children. In the Philippines, less than 3% are evangelical Christian. This is a nation that needs the gospel. 18% live on less than $1.25 a day, and 1 in 12 people who are trafficked around the world, are Filipino. That means darkness is coming from the outside to the Philippines, and it's taking the children. Over 700,000 are enslaved, and a lot of them are children in the sex trade. I shared how much this has been happening during COVID. It's tripled during COVID. So we have a vision in WA for the church to come together to see Samar transformed, Bohol transformed, and the see Negros transformed. So the churches in South Perth, that area, City of Canning, City of South Perth, City of Vic Park, they're coming together to sponsor children from the island of Bohol that we can raise up children to see that land transformed. The church in the city of Stirling, they're all coming together. About 10 churches have come together, and they're all sponsoring children from Samar in the Philippines because we want to see Samar transformed by the gospel and the East Metro side of Perth, I'm so excited to let you know, are coming together to see Negros transformed. I believe these are the days when the church comes together as one family in Christ that we are unstoppable. The nations belong to the church when we come together. Now, we don't come together because of our own efforts. Christ on the cross has already broken the hostility between us. Christ on the cross, in the resurrection, He made us one family in Christ, so we're already together. The devil wants to divide the family of God, so we won't disciple the nations. But Christ has made us one, and when we realize we are one in Christ, the, the nations belong to us. The Philippines belongs to us. How can we serve the church in there? Compassion is saying, one of the ways we can do it, and I love what you're doing in the floods. Let's go help the kids in the floods, man. Help the families in the floods. Give to that. Give to that. I don't know a thousand of our children in the Compassion Program were affected by those floods. We're going to come together. So this is Kaliza. My family sponsored this little beautiful boy. In fact, when the floods come in his home, and I've been to his home in the slums, it's on stilts like this high because when it floods, all the sewage comes up and goes all through the slum. So they have to live, they live in one room above the slum. That's the culture of the slums in the Philippines. When Cleaser first came into the compassion program at his local church, he was so malnourished, he had big mump-like symptoms all over his neck. That's such a big deal for a little boy. His family did not know Jesus. His mum had warts on her face. When he'd been in our program for six months, that issue was resolved on his neck because before then he couldn't go to the doctor and also the sponsorship was able to help his mum's issue as well. At the church in the afternoon, on the Saturday, all the kids come in and it was so good being there with these kids doing Father Abraham, doing Hillsong Kids, just worshipping and Cleaser was worshipping. 
and the Spirit of God's moving, but they do a Bible study afterwards for the parents. And so Cleese's mum has become a Christian. You can see in Cleese's T-shirt, just go back one, sorry. It says, no Jesus, no life. This is the story of children in the Philippines on Negros. No Jesus, no life. But when a child in poverty gets to know Jesus, he is resurrection life. He is freedom. So when a child is sponsored with compassion, they're connected to a local gospel-focused church. And the $48 a month my family give to sponsor Cleza, it covers his health care. It covers all nutritious food. It covers um, his education. It means the local church is tutoring him after school. He gets a mentor and a tutor, someone who will disciple him one-to-one. He gets discipled, and once he turns 12, all our children in the Compassion Program in the Philippines, we do this. We call it transformational leadership training. We teach the children how they can be agents of transformation in their communities. We teach the children how they can disciple the younger children in the Compassion Program. So a lot of our children who are teenagers now, who are born in the slums, are discipling the younger kids. They're learning to be disciples. So we've got about 100,000 children in the Philippines that we're raising up to be transformative leaders and disciples. This is how you change a nation. How do we change Negros? We come together on the east side of Perth where we are so blessed and together we sow into Negros. These are the days where we transform cities. I actually want to show you this video. We made this video. Now, Compassion work all across the Philippines. But this video was actually made in Negros. So you can see a little bit of the island and how the church is serving the children during COVID. We have already seen the situation of our beneficiaries before this crisis. And when this crisis comes, we really have seen this great need to provide, to help by giving this uh, relief distribution. The child support funds are being used. Then the funds allotted for these are used instead to provide relief goods for children and their family members and these relief goods cover the basic necessities that they need we have seen the excitement of the children and i think one thing that i am so thankful is that when they recognize that those blessings that they receive comes from the lord and that the lord answered their prayers and that their needs were provided So they were so glad, so glad. I just can't imagine. I'm proud of the church. The name of Jesus Christ has been lifted up. I really thank the Lord for this partnership that we were able to respond. Christ is our provider, and when we fear, we can always put our trust in Him. When I went to um, when I went to Cleese's church on the Sunday, because Compassion only runs their program for gospel-focused churches, Cleese had become a Christian. His mum had become a Christian. She's bringing his siblings with him to church. On average, we did some research. On average, for every child that comes to Jesus in the Compassion program, because we work through local churches, on average, four of their family members also come to Jesus. So this is the way to disciple the nations. How do you do it? You serve children. You raise them up into the fullness of what Christ called them to be. You bring the resurrection life that conquers poverty. You release them to the fullness of who God made them to be. And they're the ones that change the nations. This is how Jesus did it. He discipled the 12 and he released them. I want to speak to you today from uh, John chapter 11. How do you create a culture in your marriage, in your family, and in your local church, in the church where together we can see the glory of God being hosted so we can see transformation in our families and see His kingdom come? John 11 gives an insight into how Jesus discipled a family and how He discipled His own disciples because... One of his friends died. John 11 says this, verse 1. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him saying, Lord, 
He whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, The illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so the Son of God may be glorified through it. Father, we pray right now for your words. Renew our minds, transform us, take us from glory to glory, Father. Where we have belittled the potential of your glory in our families, renew our minds. Father, transform us. Bring our families into the fullness of what you've made us to be in this land and for the nations. Thank you that your hand is upon this church for the nations. May the men and the women in this church raise up the sons and daughters that will bring transformation to this nation and the nations in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The glory of God belongs to your family. Jesus died for nothing less. He didn't die so he could visit your home every now and again. He died that your, that your family would be completely cleansed with the blood of Jesus, that your family could host his holy, his holy glory in your home. When we have our prayer times at night as a family, we don't hold back. I don't sit there and ask God, maybe you'll come, maybe I'll beg you to come. I sit there as God's son, bold, and lead my family into the movements of God in that room. Charlotte, a couple of weeks ago, she's just turned three, and I was doing the dishes, and I saw her, and she started, she was cleaning where we have our prayer times at nighttime, and she's cleaning. And I heard her say this to herself, I'm cleaning for Jesus. And then I said, Charlotte, what did you say? She said, I'm cleaning for our worship. She was making a place. Now, when we have our prayer time, she just spins and spins and spins in in worship. She dances and she honors God. She moves with the Spirit of God in her prayer time. In May, my son Peter had this dream. He came into my bedroom at nighttime and he said, Daddy, I've had a dream from God. We're going to have to move home. I said, Pete, this dream isn't from God. Tell me about this dream. He said, we were at the beach and these waves were coming out from the land and going into the ocean. And then me and you were there, Daddy, and this tornado came up. And we ran from the tornado and came to this, uh, this shop. And my, my parents, my wife, my children, my brother were all at this building lying down and the tornado was coming towards us. And he said, everything heavy wouldn't go on the tornado, but all the light stuff would go in. And then he said to me, Daddy, we're going to, move, we're going to have to move home. We're going to have to move home. This tornado is going to come to our area. And he said, Daddy, at the end, my parents, my parents, me and my wife and my brother and, my, and Peter and Charlotte were in a line and the tornado was coming towards us. And I said, Pete, don't worry. There's no tornadoes in Serpentine. This dream is not from the Lord. That afternoon, one of my friends, Mark Senna, who is an ACC pastor in our local area. He runs the pastors group. He called me up and 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 I was talking to him and he felt like I wanted him to call me up and even though we'd spoken the day before. And and I said, Mark, tell me this. Tell me, you've seen the area of Peel. You've seen that area transformed by the gospel. How have you seen movement happen in that place? And he said to me, I'm going to tell you a dream that I had four years ago that I've only ever told my wife. He said, I was in the Peel region, which is where, my wife, my, where Pete had the dream. And he said, I saw a tornado coming up. And it came up like this, and it was a great movement. And it went to all the edges of Australia. And I said, oh, Petey. And I grabbed my son, Pete. I was wrong. You're right. The dream was from God. That was the Wednesday on the Sundays when we had that big 10-year storm with the big waves. And they showed us on the map of the news, they had all these tornadoes all across WA, Five days later, some pastors came over our house to dinner, and they said, we feel like we need to go down to Wave Rock, and we need to release something over our, over our state at Wave Rock. And then I was talking to another pastor that's that, about a week later, and he said to me, I was at the Australian Coalition of Apostolic Leaders in January this year. One thing I took back was this. He said, one person prophesied that there was going to be a tornado, a whirlwind of God that was going to start in the West and come over east, and it was going to get bigger and bigger. There is a movement of family and glory that is happening in WA and is moving over east. Even now, 
the unity in this city is exceptional and God wants it for our nation. He wants, in our city, we have no problem being the family of God. We have broken this open and we're breaking it open even more. But God wants that in Sydney and He wants it in Melbourne and He wants it in Brisbane. What we are breaking open is for our nation. I believe it's for Asia. A couple of weeks later, after Pete had this dream, I had a lot of the apostolic leaders in our city over my house. And there was 24 pastors who have their own pastors networks who are at my house for dinner. And, uh, and they had all brought one spiritual son or daughter with them, had invited them to come. And the key pastor who these pastors looked to in our city, he was going to share first, and he shared this. He said, in the past, this is how we used to do it in ministry. You'd have a baton, and you'd pass it on to the next person, and they would take the baton, and the other person would leave them behind, and they'd run with that new ministry. He said, that's not how it is anymore. And he grabbed me, and he said, it's like this now. He said, the father ties his leg to his spiritual son, and they run together like a three-legged race. And the Spirit of God came in my family room. And he was going to share, I was going to share, until the other pastors were going to share. But the Spirit of God moved. And for the next hour, every pastor in that room shared about how God is moving in the space of family right now. And, and it was like a tornado in the room. And I said this to my wife. We're in, the fam- we're in our kitchen in the family room. And I said, Rosie where the Spirit of God is moving right now is where little Charlotte spins and worships Jesus. She broke open this tornado. And this is affecting our city. This is affecting our nation. That dream that Pete had went to Indonesia and went to a lot of the leaders in our city. How does a three-year-old and an eight-year-old bring bring transformation to a city? How does that happen? Because you raise them up in the glory of God. This is the hour for the children to be raised up in the glory of God. This is the hour for your family to host His glory. It will disciple our nation. It will disciple the nations. God said to me this. He said, I'm going to pour out my glory on your family like rain. What are you going to do about it? He said, I will pour out my glory on your own family, and then I'll pour it out on your ministry. I want to tie my leg to my heavenly father and then tie my other leg to my eight-year-old son and my three-year-old daughter and say, Pete and Charlotte, I'm discipling you. In verse 14, Jesus continues. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, but listen, but for your sake, I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Jesus now is telling his disciples, Lazarus is dead, but I'm actually happy for your sake because you're about to be discipled. God wants to bring the supernatural in your life, and he wants to bring those you're discipling, your, your own family, your non-Christian friends. Your non-Christian friends, you disciple them to the cross. And once they get to the cross, you keep discipling them. We don't wait till they're Christians. You just start drawing them into God now. Just bring them. Draw, draw, disciple them to the cross. Once they're saved, disciple them in the resurrection. Who are you discipling? Let them see God move through your life. Your children, let them see God move through your life. Who is in your family? Let them see God move through your life. Jesus did this miracle in a way that the disciples and this family, Mary and Martha, would see and learn how they can move in the glory of God. I went to Tasmania because my wife graduated uh, Harvest West Bible College. Anyone here been to Tassie? Yes? How good is it? It's beautiful. And we're at Tassie, and my son was three at this time. And I said to Petey, 
Pete, we're going to go climb this place called Wineglass Bay. And my dad said to me, Steve, you can't go to Wineglass Bay. Pete's too small. You have to carry him all the way up. I'm like, I don't want to have to carry Pete up this mountain, but I really want to see it. It was on my top 10 list of things to do in Tassie, and it was like number one. So I'm like, Petey, at the bottom of the mountain, I'm like, Pete, wouldn't it be amazing if you climb this whole mountain without Daddy even carrying you? You could tell Grandma and Granddad that you're a mountain crusher. And he's like, yes, Daddy, I'm going to climb this mountain myself. So we start off, and I'm just encouraging him. And then there's a group of about 12 who have got those aluminium walking sticks and lycra. We don't wear lycra and serpentine. And they've got these alum, and they're like, they walk past us, and they're all professionals. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to really encourage Petey. So I'm encouraging Petey, Pete, you're a mountain crusher. You're going to crush this mountain today. My boy, you're going to crush it. You can do it. We get halfway up the mountain. I'm like, Pete, look at the view. You, You did this. And I'm encouraging him. And we keep going up. And as we get to the top, we catch up to that walking group. And they turn around, and they see us. And they get their walking sticks like this. And they make an archway for Peter. And they clap him as he walks through the archway and he gets to the top. And the view is amazing. Not just because we could see the ocean and the mountains, but because my three-year-old that day became a mountain crusher. But it took his daddy to see that he was a mountain crusher. Pete couldn't have crushed that mountain. He would be like, Daddy, pick me up. But I know who my son is. I know the greatness that is inside him, and I call it out. Who are you calling out what God has in them for what God wants them to conquer? For Charlotte and Pete to come into all God has for them, I have to walk beside them. Just as Jesus walked beside his disciples and Mary and Martha in this story. Who are you walking beside? Who are you encouraging? Who are you speaking into their lives? In verse 21, Jesus, this happens. Jesus arrives back where Mary and Martha are. And he meets Martha and she is in pain and he listens to her. And he answers her questions. Those you're discipling your children, your non-Christian friends, your Christian friends. Listen to their questions and respond with life and speak. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Sometimes we can respond straight away out of our brokenness. Oh, you're upset with me. No, Jesus didn't respond out of his pain. He responded out of what the Spirit of God was saying. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, listen to this, this belongs to you. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Martha started with a negativity towards Jesus. Jesus responded with revelation. Martha caught that and responded with more revelation. So when someone comes to you negative, respond with revelation. Bring the rhema word because you're discipling them. You're bringing them in and then let them come into it. Don't be distracted by what they're saying. Hear what he's saying and release it into them. I must say, in my family prayer times with my kids, when I'm bringing them into the glory of God, Charlotte, I never have to discipline her. She just worships God. Peter, five, six, seven times, I'm I'm telling him off. Why? He's distracted. But me, I'm discipling him and I'm bringing him into it. And some of his best encounters he's had with God, I had to disciple him all the way through that prayer time. Because Charlotte, she'll cry if we don't give her a prayer time at night. She'll cry. She wants to worship. But Pete, he's like, I've got to disciple him to it. Whatever you've got, bring God in. Journey with your kids. 
Right here, you can see Jesus is opening her rea- her, the eyes of her heart to the realities of the kingdom of God, even in the midst of her pain. He is teaching her about the miracle he's about to do li- with Lazarus. So on your journey of seeing the, the, the supernatural move through your life, and God wants to breathe right through you. Every part of you that says, I can't see the supernatural in my life, that's a lie. You're God's child. If you believe you won't see the supernatural, You've already chosen what's going to happen. But rest into the resurrection life of Christ. You weren't born again into just nothing. You were born again into resurrection life. It belongs to you. You carry it. Now in, Mar- now in, in verse 32, now when Mary came to Jesus, to where Jesus was, she saw him and she fell at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Once again, there's negativity, but there's intimacy. She falls at his feet and she shares her pain with Jesus. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Jesus is bringing Mary and Martha into this miracle, into the movements of God. But listen, when Mary was in pain... Jesus came right into that pain with her, and he wept. He already knew he was going to bring her to life, but he loved her so much, he was going to journey with her up that mountain so she would see the crushed. When Pete was about three or four years old, I saw an angel come down and bring a little garment for him, and it was a prophetic mantle for his life. And so Rosie and I prayed that over him, and we saw nothing happen that year. Actually, maybe he was probably a bit older than that. And then later on that year is when Pete, and I shared this last time it says, when Pete went to heaven and God took him there and he showed him around heaven. But what Pete had to battle with that prophetic gift, he had to battle against bad dreams and demonic attacks. And so I had to walk with my son through these nightmares. And I was discipling him, I was teaching him about the kingdom of God, about the resurrection life of Christ. And I remember earlier this year, something changed with Pete. Because he would run into my bedroom and cry. In fact, when we take Pete to bed at night, if Rosie and I both don't, both don't pray for his dreams, he'll cry because he knows it's a battle for him. Our kids need us. They need us to be right there listening to their pain. Where are they weeping? Come into that place and bring the revelation of God. Come into that place, place and bring the miraculous. Who are you discipling? What's the pain they're having? Who are your non-Christian friends? Where's their pain? Come into that pain and bring the revelation of God. So there I was with Pete. And he's having these bad dreams. And then earlier this year, he comes into my bedroom. He says, Daddy, I had this bad dream. And these things are demonic. And he said, when this thing came, I said, in the name of Jesus. And I was so proud of my boy. I was like, that's my boy. And then he had another bad dream about a week later, and he started singing that song, My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God can. And he's singing in the middle of the dream. And I'm like, this is incredible. My son is breaking through. But I've been praying for him. I've been praying for him. I've been journeying with him. I'm, I'm praying with my boy in the middle of his pain. Then when he turned eight, the demonic dream stopped. And he started having dreams from God. He broke through. Since he turned eight in May, he's had six dreams from God, like the one I just shared with you, but four, five others. Some of them have been significant for compassion. God is speaking through my son. We're breaking through the supernatural in his life. This is what Jesus is doing with his disciples and with his family in this story. I remember when Pete was about to turn six and God said to me the day before his birthday, he said, I've got a gift for your son tonight. I want him to speak in tongues. So we're at the dinner table and I said, Pete, I'm going to tell you your Bible story now. And I started telling him the story about Philip. And God said, no, don't tell him the story about Philip. Tell him the story about Peter. When we were, when Pete was in Rosie's tummy, God said to me, I want you to call your son Peter. I said, no, I don't like that name. 
he said to me again, I want you to call him Peter. I said, God, my cousin's in jail. His name is Peter. <laughs> God said, I want you to call him Peter. Three times he told me to call him Peter. And I said to my wife, Roz, I said, Roz, have you got a name for our son? And we'd not discussed the name Peter. We discussed all those cool names, Joshua, Jesse, Ethan, you know, all the cool names. And then she said, I got the name Peter. I was like, ah, that's his name then. So it's his sixth birthday, the night before, and I said, Pete, and I started telling the story of Acts chapter 2, and the Spirit of God is in the room. Pete's eating his dinner, Rosie's eating her dinner. And I tell the story about how the waiting in the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God comes, and I act it out. I act out how that Peter starts speaking in tongues and he starts preaching, and I'm like, Pete, now... I want to pray for you. And so Pete comes around, and me and Roz are doing all those little tricks to try and get him to speak in tongues, and it's just not working. Pete, copy me. Pete, listen to what Daddy's saying. Nothing's happening. And then Rosy says, Pete, bedtime, go brush your teeth. She doesn't know that God's spoken to me. I've got a gift for this boy tonight for his birthday tomorrow. And Pete goes, he starts walking to brush his teeth, and then he turns around, and he looks at me and says, Daddy, I want to do it how you did it. And he walked to where I stood, where I told the story. And he lifted his hands to Jesus. And he looked up and he started speaking in tongues. And the Spirit of God is in the room like this. <laughs> Spirit of God's in the room like this. And then he comes around to where I stood and he starts preaching. And he's bringing the word just like Peter did in Acts 2. A year later, he says to me, Daddy, it's my birthday tomorrow. Does God have a gift? I said, oh, this boy's got faith. And so we're having dinner, and God says to me, I want to give him bold tongues. And so I said, Pete, I'm going to teach you about bold tongues. Now I'm a New Zealander. In the Maoris, we know bold tongues. You guys seen the haka? Yeah. We know boldness in New Zealand. So I'm teaching you about bold tongues. I've been to the prayer meeting here. This church knows about bold tongues. And I'm teaching him about the bold tongues and then and the level of the authority that comes. And then for the next five minutes after I told him, Charlotte was born now and she's in her high chair and Pete is just praying over Charlotte with bold tongues by himself. This year when he turned eight, the night before his birthday, Rosie and I both felt the same word, fire belongs to him this year. Acts 2 again. The fire came, and this year, he's had the Spirit of God touch him over and over again, but I'm stewarding that word. I'm walking beside my son, and I'm saying, fire, fire. I'm walking him up that mountain, fire. This belongs to you. Acts chapter 2 belongs to you, my son, fire. What belongs to your children? Walk beside them and release it. What belongs to those you're discipling? Walk beside them. If you're not discipling someone, Open your spiritual eyes and see who God's put around you. They're all around you. People who just need to be loved. Verse 38. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he, for he has been dead four days Jesus said to her, did I not tell you? Listen to this. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. He said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. This belongs to you, my family. If you believe, you will see the glory of God in your family, in your home. What, this is the way I do it. When I've got my kids and I put the worship music on or I'm on the guitar and I'm leading them, I don't imagine God's far away. I imagine the Trinity in the room. As I start to see the Spirit of God, the Father, the Son, in the room, I start to move with them. But it starts by faith. First, first I have to believe that they're in the room, and they are in the room. But if you don't believe the Trinity are in your house, you'll never enjoy it. But if you believe it, you'll start to see it. And as I start to see the glory of God in my home, I start saying what the Spirit is saying, and I start doing what the Spirit is doing. It starts with faith, then I start to see, because if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Then as you see, you start to move. So I will have my children moving in the glory of God. It's easier for them to move in the glory of God if their daddy is doing it, because now it's easy for them they can follow their dad and they start to sense what God is doing. 
It's easier for your friends to see the glory of God in your life if you start saying what he's saying and doing what he's doing. So they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, listen to this, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. Listen to this. Jesus is bringing them into his prayer time. I don't have a great prayer life by myself. My prayer life with my family is amazing. Because I don't spend my time by myself. I get on my knees with my kids and my wife, and they are part of my prayer life. Jesus right here brings the family that he loves, Lazarus, uh, Martha and Mary, and he brings his disciples into his prayer time. He even says that I say this for those who are listening. He's bringing them into his prayer time. Who needs to be part of your prayer life? Are you praying alone? You know you pray better when you pray with your family. Make it part of your routine. Don't pray alone. If someone in your family is a great prayer, they've got the gift to pray and you can't even, you're not even that good at praying, pray with them. Let the breakthrough they have be for your whole family. Steve, I'm not good at praying. Yeah, but your kid is or your wife is. Get in there. Your husband is. Together as a family, we can go so much further than by ourselves. I love this verse 43. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind them and let him go. Jesus had told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. But now he showed Martha that he is the resurrection and the life. Show those disciples, those you're discipling, who he is. Speak it, say what he's saying, but move with God, show them who he is. Let the Spirit of God move through you. Let them see the supernatural. Who do you need to declare, come out, come forth, be released from death? Jesus is the resurrection and life. Who is weeping around you like Mary was weeping? Who is weeping around you? Who is weeping in your family? Who is depressed in your family? Who is lonely in your family? Come into that place. Listen to what the Father is saying and start to speak life. Declare it and release it into the atmosphere, into that weeping, bring life. Bring, revela bring revelation, bring life. I remember when I was a little kid in New Zealand and our next door neighbor was a chain smoker. He used to smoke a lot of cigarettes. And one day he died and he called up the, the parents, sorry, his wife called up my mum next door and she said, Norm's just died. Can you come over? And my mum, uh, the four kids, we had six kids, but it was only four kids at that time. And we were all at the window watching. And my mum put the phone down and she said she felt like time stopped. And she walked over there to the next door neighbor's front yard. And God said to her, put your hand on him. And she reached down to this dead body on the ground and she said, Norm. And she said, as she said it, she felt like resurrection life come right through her arm. And Norm went like this. His, as soon as she touched him, he came up straight up and his false teeth flew out of his mouth. <laughs> and then the ambulance came up and took Norm to hospital. My mom then went and visited Norm in the hospital, led him to Jesus, and two weeks later he died. What was mom doing? She was showing her kids how to host the glory of God. When I was dating my wife, I was in love with this girl, like totally in love. You know in the movies where the guy's like crazy? I was that guy. I was crazy, and she rang me up one day, and she said to me, Steve, I'm going to talk to you tomorrow about something, and this could be the end of our relationship. And I put the phone down, and I was heartbroken. I said, God, I love this girl. I want to marry this girl. She's so beautiful. And God said to me, don't worry about it. I've got it sorted. 
She came over the next day and we sat in my parents' front yard and she said to me, Steve, the doctors have told me I can't have children and if I do, it would have to be IVF, if, even if we can have them. I said, Roz, I said, don't worry. God's told me. He's told me already last night. Whatever you told me, it's going to be okay. We decided we wanted to have our first child at four years of being married. We had four people come up to us separately and give us prophetic words that we were about to have a child. And we had Peter, but we had to break through. What I had seen in my mom bring resurrection life, I had to declare that for my family. My family needs resurrection life. And then we wanted our second child. There was such a big gap. But I was praying for my family and I was declaring resurrection life. I was declaring, come forth, my children. Just as Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. I was like, come forth, my child. I remember it was like November, December. Uh, before we had Charlotte, and I just started feeling this joy that God was going to give me a baby. And by now, Pete was five, so it was a big gap of us not having a child. And I felt this joy. And then come January, I was just, Rosie also connected. She actually said, just as I'd come into this faith of having a great joy, and I was like, I, it's like God had already given me this child. Rosie came into the same faith. February, we conceived, and then we had Charlotte. And for us, it wasn't about IVF, and if you had IVF, go for it. But for us, it was about walking with our Father and bringing our family into all God has called us to be, that nothing will be robbed from us. This is what Jesus was walking this family through. He was walking Mary, Martha, and Lazarus into the miraculous. Listen to this in verse 45. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. God wants to impart faith into your children, and he wants to impart faith into those you're discipling. How does that happen? Say what he's saying, the rhema word, and do what he's doing, and let the, let the miraculous flow through. Listen to what Paul says. I'll finish with this passage. Listen to what Paul the Apostle says when he's praying for the church in Ephesians. He brings them into his prayer life and he tells them what he's praying for in Ephesians 1. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you in Ephesians 1 verse 16, remembering you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, listen, the Father of glory, Teach your family to walk with the glorious Father. May give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The Spirit of God wants to give you wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of Him, release it into your family. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened. As my heart is enlightened, it brings my family into the enlightening of God. That you may know the hope to which He has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and listen to this, the immeasurable power, the greatness of this power toward us who believe, according to the great might that he worked in Christ when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him in his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and power and dominion. Paul is saying this, I want the eyes of your hearts to be enlightened that you would see that the same power that raised Christ from the dead is in you and it's upon you and it surrounds you. And if you will believe it is in you, you will see the glory of God. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Australia wants to see the glory of God, but they will only see it through someone who is saying what he's saying and doing what he's doing, who is moving with him. You don't have to say, God, give me that resurrection life. When you came in Christ, He put it in you. Paul didn't say, may they have the resurrection life. He prayed, may they see that they have it. You already have it. I pray today the eyes of your hearts would be enlightened to see that the same power that raised Lazarus from the dead is upon you. Reinhard Bonnke said this, who led 50 million people to Jesus. He said this, when he started his ministry, God told him this, 
when he raised a child from the dead, he said, Ryan Harbonke, my word on my lips is as powerful as my word on your lips. God's word on God's lips is as powerful as God's words on your lips. If you believe, you'll see the glory of God. This church hosts the glory of God on a Sunday. Your family can host the glory of God on a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday and a Friday. When you're hanging out with your non-Christian friends, you can host the glory of God as you say what He's saying and do what He's doing. It belongs to you. You don't have to ask for it. You have to move with it. This is Alex John. He lives on Negros Island. My family sponsor him. His dad's not a Christian. Alex John is a teenager, so now he's doing our transformational leadership training. But my family walks beside Alex John up the mountain of poverty, up the mountain of never hearing the gospel, up the mountain of no education. We walk beside him and we write him letters and we encourage him and we speak into his life. I remember once he's, he sent us a memory verse and he said this to my family. He said, I want you to mem- memorize this verse. God is with you. I will not be afraid. I've been to Alice's home. He lives in a two-bedroom two home made of bamboo in a slum. His home is not safe. When he says to my family, do not be afraid. God is with you. He has lived that verse. When he tells us to memorize it, <clears throat> he has lived it. He's imparting it back into our family. He's now walking beside us and taking us up our mountains. One night, I was in Pete's bedroom, and he was crying because he'd had a bad dream when he was about six. And he said to Pete, remember what Alex wrote? God is with you. I will not be afraid. I said, Pete, God is in this room with you right now. And as Pete was crying and crying because his demonic dream said, God is with you. He's in this room. God is with you. He's in this room. And we speak into Alex's life. We're so proud of him. He is discipling the younger kids in the Compassion Program at his local church. Poverty has been broken in his life and he's breaking it in the lives of, around, of the kids around him. How do we transform the Philippines? We walk beside our kids and disciple them. How do we transform Australia? We walk beside our kids and disciple them. We let them experience the glory of God. I said to Alex John, what do you want to be when you're older? He said to me, he said to me I want to be a policeman. I said, why Alex? said, because I love my country. Yes, we love this kid. I encourage you as I finish. We have some children at the back of the stand. If you want to sponsor a child, come to Pastor Moises and have a chat to him. We're going to do it as a church. But all these children, they live in extreme poverty. It's about $11 a week and it just changes a whole family's life. It connects them with the local gospel-focused church. It brings them into the gospel. It brings them into discipleship. It brings them into health care and nutritious food. It connects them with someone who will individually disciple them all the way through. So I encourage you, and I thank you for being part of this relationship. We want to do a, an East Metro Pastors Unity trip to Negros once COVID finishes down. So I will try and still Pastor Moises for a week if I can. I know you're a very busy man. If not, that's fine. Just take Pastor Godfrey or Pastor Connie. Take someone, no pressure. We want to do some church unity trips where we take the church in each metro together to Negros and say, hey, we're all helping these churches disciple these children. How about we work closer together to disciple our schools, to walk beside them to see the glory of God in our schools. I'm going to close in prayer and then I'll pass it over. Pastor Moses. Spirit of God, let's stand up. Spirit of God, Spirit of God, Spirit of God. Father, we pray for the Philippines right now. Let's lift our hands, let's lift our voices. Father, we pray for the Philippines. Father, these floods that have happened. Father, we pray for life and finances to come in. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak life. We speak life. We speak resurrection life. Father, we come right now against the trafficking in the Philippines and the sexual exploitation of children. We speak life into the Philippines. We speak life into the Philippines. We speak life where children are being exploited on the, on the internet. We speak life in Jesus' name. Father, we call out 
a generation in the Philippines. Come forth in Jesus' name. Just as you called Lazarus forth, we call a young generation forth. Come forth in Jesus' name. For Western Australia, we say come forth in Jesus' name. Father, for our families right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for an impartation right now in this room to host the glory of God and the miraculous and the prophetic in our families in Jesus' name, to move with the Spirit of God, to move with the Spirit of God. Every part of our thinking that has said, my family can't host the glory of God like church does on Sunday, let that be broken in yes, Jesus' God. name. Yes, let that be left on the cross. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Father, their presence, the glory of God belongs in your family. Take it, receive it. If you believe it's yours, you'll start to see it in Jesus' name. We release it. We release it. Father, right now I pray for dreaming of how you can move. Spirit of God, how you can move in our families, how you can move in those we're discipling, those who don't know you. Spirit of God, that we will disciple our families, disciple those who don't know Jesus to the cross and from the cross in Jesus' name. Spirit of God, Spirit of God. Amen. Spirit Amen. of God, breathe on your church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pour out your presence. Amen. Amen. Speak through your word. Yes, Lord. We pray in every Come on. nation. Come on. Hallelujah. Rise, be yes. yes. Our hope and salvation. Hallelujah. Christ oh. of the Spirit of God. Yes, Lord. Spirit oh. of God. Thank you. Hallelujah. We want to start discipling our children in this church. We would like them to understand, amen, what we are doing, our love for God. And God has been speaking to me even before this, you know, with Steve. Then I want, my heart as your pastor is that we can teach our children. And that's why I was saying that we'd like to do this as a church. And uh, show to our children how are we going to love you know, people in the world. Would you like to do that, church? Amen. And like, we'd like to stand with our children. I'd like to see that, you know, as we support these children every Sunday, uh, we would like to show these children, you know, you know, these children that we are supporting, how are they going? And as they grow, we would like them, you know, to know how to disciple people. Amen. And how they will be part of the growth and development of the children. We started this church as a family and we, you know, gather couples together so that we can disciple them so that they would like to become one because couples are one. And, and that's the start of a family because the family will never become, you know, a family of God unless the couple become one. And they can never teach their children if they did not become one. And so we started with that as a church. And then we, we went to disciple our youth. We discipled our youth for about three, four years now. And we're trying them to show to them how is to love the words of God. If you have noticed that. And you can see our young people now stand in this church being used by God. Hallelujah. Speak the word of God. You know, in this church. And we started to disciple ladies because the strength of the couple, especially those ones, the ladies also would be, you know, disciple and raise them up. It would strengthen the church. And that's why you would see Pastor Connie was trying to come up with the ladies, come together and be discipled in Christ. And now we have come up this thing and go back to our couples. Because now that our youth are strengthened, the ladies are strengthened, we'd like to go back again 
to where we started before as a church and disciple our couples together. And that's why we have this Married for Life course. If you know what they're saying, church. And thank you for speaking to us, Pastor Steve, because now you have declared the words of God that is already happening and will be happening more in the future. And this is our Multiply 2023. We would like to disciple people of God. And we would like to go back, hey, couples, to become one. And that's why we are trying to press on so that you can teach your children to pray. How are you going to teach them if you guys are not doing it together? And we would like, like Steve was saying, and Roslyn, they come together and show to their children how to pray, how to read the Word of God, and how to declare the Word of God in their life. So great. Come on, just give Him praise. And this is our heart in this church. Hallelujah. Thank you for advancing it for me because in the early, you know, 2021, my heart is for the couples, you know, to get down and go down to the children and parent them. And so the Married for Life we're doing would like to have parents for life. We would like you couples to start teaching and discipling your children. So great, amen. This word today has come up all together of what we would like because we, are, we would like to influence the world, amen. And that's why we're pressing on for our couples, for our youth, for our children, hallelujah, to become disciples of Christ. If you would ask me what is Multiply 2023, it's about discipling, discipling people teaching them the word. Amen. The soap is just a means so that we can be discipled with the word of God and we want to declare it to them. And so this is a challenge for all of us. Amen. Church, are you there? Can you say amen with me? Amen. Hallelujah. Looking for families that are coming together, prophesy the word of God. Amen. Looking at our children and our youth grow in this church amazing we are truly transformed empowered so that we can influence the world come on sing this song again hallelujah yes jesus hallelujah come on hallelujah it's on good. your church Lord, yeah. your presence Father, we cannot even, Lord, pay and repay everyone who comes and speak the word of God in this pulpit. Father is so blessed. All our pastors are speakers, Lord, in this church because you have brought this church, Lord, to become a church of the words of God. And Lord, what we can give, Lord, Father, today, great, Lord, things, Lord, is to speak on his life speak to his family god speak to his ministry father so that god you would continue to allow him to bring life and resurrection to churches and to children lord father wherever you're going to lead him lord and lord we want to speak lord father hallelujah greater revelations that will be upon him in the name of jesus so that, Lord, whatever we cannot do, Father, you are going to do in His life and the churches and the pastors, Father, under His connection in the name of Jesus. 
And Father, we would like to become a part of what God is doing in this compassion, Australia, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we would like to see not only in the Philippines, we would like to see in Africa that, Lord, children will come, will be transformed, Lord. Not only God, hallelujah, in Africa, in the Middle East, Father, in the whole Asia, oh God, in the whole world, oh God, so that, Lord, this church will truly be transformed, empowered to influence the world. And so we thank you so much, Lord. We just would like to praise you. Lord, we are going to bring with us the name of the Father, the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the name, Lord, of Jesus, who is the great name, hallelujah, forevermore, forevermore, hallelujah. And the church of God will just say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother, sister. Hallelujah. Praise. Come on, give him a love offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Hey, church. Just would like to remind you, amen, that in the next coming weeks, the government is becoming stricter because of uh, the opening of the, uh, you know, borders. And as a pastor, I would like you all to have extra caution amen i'd like you to be safe uh practice safe and protection always uh, because our government i have not received yet the uh, you know direct uh, but i would like us to become part of what the government is doing is that okay church so in the coming sundays you might see that we're going to have like registration of names you know uh, outside we'd like to see how it goes but I think this will be happening in WA uh, in the next coming week. So just a heads up, amen, that we would like to become safe. Amen. And we'd like to participate with what government is doing in the next coming week. So be safe, amen. Covering in the name of Jesus for all of us and the church. Amen. Praise the Lord. And hey, if you are available, uh, I'd like to inform you that we have a 4.30 service worship for those who are available in our Tehila Praise Church in the south in Wellar. Amen. With Pastor Godfrey, Hilda, and our team. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.